Hi, uh, my name is Helen. I'm a junior studying computer science at Penn. At Penn. Okay. Uh, hi, I'm Carly, and I'm a sophomore studying chemical engineering at Penn. And both you don't know us, why you're here. I don't know why I'm here. <laughs> both of us are um, on exec for Penn Apps, so we help organize and run the hackathon held at Penn. Yeah. Uh, so now we're going to try to co-teach an intro course on Python. Uh, I'm probably going to assume that some of you have programmed a bit before in other languages, some of you just haven't ever touched programming, uh, so I'll try to be as um, nice to both sides as possible. Uh, please forgive me if I yeah. am confusing. Uh, <laughs> I'm not very good at this, but we'll see how things go. So, uh, oh, I'm here playing the role of someone who has little to no experience with computer programming, hence the chemical engineering aspect of my life. Um, so I'll be interjecting frequently with questions that some people may have. Hopefully there won't be many. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so first uh, I'm going to show you on Terminal. Uh, for those of you who have Windows, I'm sorry, I don't know anything about Windows. Uh, but for those of you who have Macs and run Linux, good job. Uh, so if you just type Python in your terminal and press enter, uh, you'll enter Python's interactive version. Um, so first it'll tell you what version of Python you have. Most Macs come default installed with some version of Python depending on uh, when you purchased it. Um, so right now, if you can't tell, I'm running 2.7.6. Um, your version isn't too important as of right now. Uh, and if you see these three angle brackets, you know that you're in the Python interactive version. Um, if you've ever used Ruby's interactive, uh, it's, it's about the same idea. You can uh, put in single line commands. You can test out um, what, what these commands will return. Uh, you can print things. You can uh, just do all sorts of like testing, basically. Uh, so I'm just going to show you how to write a simple Hello World program, uh, as most uh, programming language classes first start out as. So, in Python, it's very simple. Um, you type print, and a lot of programming languages have this concept. Printing is just outputting some type of uh, string of words, numbers, items to some something you can read. So your terminal output, uh, anything, or your console output, anything like that. Uh, so in Python, the way you do that is by using the word print, which is very simple, very intuitive. And if you want to print the, wor the string hello world, uh, you would want to put that between quotation marks. So these quotation marks mean that you're creating a string. And generally, when you print things, you can only print strings, but you can put anything in a string, like numbers or letters, or punctuation marks or white spaces, although you won't be able to see them when you print them out. So now that when I press enter, you see that the terminal returns to us hello world, which means that Python understood the statement. It means that Python knows it's right, and it understands that it wants to, it, we want it to return hello world. So now we have hello world on the screen and everyone's happy. You can use this interactive version to do all sorts of things. You can actually write programs in this interactive version, you just won't be able to save them. And it's it's just not as intuitive as just using some type of text editing software or uh, notepad or anything like that to just write multi-line programs and just run them in Python. So now I'll teach you how to do that. First we'll exit this interactive version by typing exit and pressing enter, and now as you can see, we're back in bash. Uh, so I'm going to open Sublime Text, which is my text editor of choice. Uh, if you don't know what that is, it's totally fine. It's just an application you can download off the internet. It's very easy to find using Google. Uh, you can use whatever you want. You can add, use Notepad, Notepad++, any text editor that will save Python files is totally fine. So now we're going to explain another programming paradigm called the if statement. Um, so an if statement is basically a piece of code that will run as long as some expression that you give it is valid. 
uh, or is true. Um, so if you want it to run all the time, then you can write if true, which means that like true will always be true, so this will just run whenever. That's not very useful, uh, and most people don't use if statements that way, but that's, that's generally um, a way that they can be used. Um, so you can put any expression uh, in, in this if statement to be evaluated uh, that can be represented by true or false. So in real life, this is kind of like asking someone a, re a yes or no question. So if you determine that this question is actually a yes or no question, um, it can generally be represented in a form that you can put into an if statement. So for example, you can ask, is the variable x greater than or equal to 5? And if you know what x is, which you should, um, then this is a valid yes or no question, and that's what we're going to put in our if statement. So first we need to tell uh, Python what we want x to be. So here, we can simply write x equals and whatever number string, whatever we want. So we're going to make x 5. Um, and we don't need the semicolon because we're not in Java or anything like that. Um, so as you can tell, we also don't need to put in int or string or anything to tell Python what type of uh, variable x is. Python will figure that out for itself, which is another really cool thing about Python. Um, so now Python knows from this program that x equals 5, uh, and we can write an if statement. So we're going to tell it to run this if statement is if x is greater than or equal to 5. This is the general way you define an if statement. You start out with the word if. Python then knows that you're going to give it some type of true or false expression afterward. And here, um, in our case, this will be true because uh, x is 5. And this asks if x is greater than or equal to 5. Uh, and you end, up, end that with a colon. So now you can see that my cursor is in a tab, is, is like one tab from uh, where it originally was. Uh, this is because, and this happened automatically, um, and this is because Sublime understands that Python is very intense about how you use white space. White space meaning tabs, spaces, anything like that. Um, because it doesn't have brackets the way that other languages do. So with Java, you would denote the beginning and end of the body of an if, if statement with uh, an open curly bracket and an end curly bracket. But since Python doesn't have anything like that, uh, the only way they can tell when something is inside the if statement or not is by seeing like how many um, white space units they are away from like when the if statement started. So here, uh, when we're one tab in, Python knows that we're inside the if statement and we only want to run this piece of code when the expression is true. Um, so here we're just going to tell it to print hello world again. Uh, so this should be pretty familiar. And now that we're outside of the if statement, as is evidenced by the fact that my cursor is outside um, the tabbed area, uh, we're, we're going to write another another hello world statement to show the difference between um, having white space and not having white space and uh, like what the power of an if statement does. So here I'm going to save this as my if statement.py uh, and .py is the extension for Python files. Um, and the way that you would run this piece of code uh, is by going back to your terminal. Um, you can go back to your Python interactive uh, editor and you can import this. So once you import this file, uh, it basically just runs whatever's in the file. So Python learns that x equals 5. Uh, it, t it, is, it realizes that x is in fact greater than 5. So it prints the hello world that's inside uh, the if statement and it prints the hello world that's outside the statement. So that's not very helpful because we didn't actually use uh, the power of the if statement, which means that like if it's not true, it won't run. 
Um, so now we're going to edit this and we're going to make it four. And in this case, when we run, um, when we run this program in Python, it should only print out the second statement because it wasn't tabbed and thus isn't part of the if statement. Um, so here we can see that in fact Python realized that x is not greater than or equal to 5 this time and it didn't print the first hello world but it printed the second hello world. Um, and this is a very important programming paradigm. Uh, using this you can um, make, you can create conditional trees, like you can tell it to, um, you know, like do certain things when this is true, but in a different condition you can do uh, something completely different and this can go on forever, not a good thing to do, not fun, but it's possible. Um, and this, this is just essentially uh, very useful. So what would happen if you forgot to indent the second line where it says print hello world? Okay, so uh, that's a good question, Carly. <laughs> <laughs> um, so if we forget to print, or if we forget to indent the line, uh, which you shouldn't do because Sublime gives you an indented line, uh, so we're going to delete this indent and we're going to see what happens. Uh, but what's going to happen is that it's going to give you a syntax error because right now what you're giving it is an empty if statement. So you're giving it a condition but nothing to run. Uh, so Python is essentially going to get very confused and tell you that you're doing something wrong, which in fact you are. Uh, so we're going to rerun this. Oops. We're going to rerun by importing again. And in fact, uh, it tells you that you have an error uh, because it expected an indented block. So generally, Python is very helpful when um, it wants to help you realize what you did wrong. So that's very nice. Uh, so you make sure you indent. Indentation is, is of the utmost importance. Um, Cool. So now we're going to talk about the concept of a function. Uh, a function is kind of confusing, perhaps, um, but it's a paradigm that's used very frequently in programming, regardless of what uh, language you're using most of the time. Um, this is definitely true in Python. Um, a, pro uh, a function is basically a piece of reusable code that you can define and change the inputs for. And based on what input you choose, uh, the output will perhaps be different based on like what the internal code of the function does. Um, so this is just like a really useful thing to do because you don't have to repeat a lot of the code that you write uh, if you use functions. Um, so use functions a lot. <laughs> um, the way that you define a function in Python is very simple. Uh, the keyword for defining a function is the f. And we're going to change this to Python so it can show us nice colors. Uh, def stands for define. Define just tells Python's interpreter that you're about to define a function and to pay attention. Um, so we're going to just call this my function because we're learning about functions. So right now I put two parentheses. Uh, between these parentheses you can put in what inputs you want the function to have. Um, the function can have anywhere from zero to like any finite number of inputs. You would probably not want it to have 500 inputs. That would be very tedious to type. Uh, but generally functions have anywhere from zero to three, four inputs. Um, and if you have no inputs that's totally fine. doesn't mean your function is worse. It just means that your function doesn't need any anything to be put in to have something come out. Um, so we're going to put in an input, actually. Um, and we're going to input something called an array. And we're going to learn about this concept later. Um, so right. Now, the reason that, okay, so this will be like encapsulated in, in a function, but the code inside it 
uh, also has another um, programming paradigm that's pretty important. Um, so we will create something called a loop. Um, and loops are generally used when you want to do something iteratively, meaning you want to do the same thing many times to a list of items or you want to add something a lot of times to like the same uh, number or you know something that doesn't require like changing code it just requires doing the same thing multiple times and you don't want to write that as many times as you're gonna run that you just want to write that once and have that run as many times as you as you want it to uh, it's just a lot easier and um, a lot nicer uh, so we're going to learn about um, while loops first uh, so we're going to just write a while loop for whatever array that we're given um, so the, the way you define a while loop is by using the word while uh, and using uh, parentheses to give it some type of expression same idea as with if statements um, it's still an expression that will be true or false, like a yes or no question. So here we want to um, continue looping on this array until, uh, for example, uh, let's see, for example, um, we're going to create some variable called count um, and we're going to keep looping until count is 10 or something. Um, so count equals zero, same idea as, as when we defined x. Uh, you don't have to tell Python that count is an integer. It'll figure that out on its own. Um, so here we can just say, well, count is less than or equal to 10. Um, and it'll continue looping until this condition becomes not true. Uh, so. Actually, we can hold off on arrays later. We'll just talk about counting now. Um, so here we can uh, perhaps add one to some random variable. Um, so here we can do this, which means that uh, var, which I just defined up there, um, you add one to it every time you loop on this. Uh, and we want to print var so that we can see how it progresses over time. Um, so we expect it to increase by one every time the, the loop goes through. Uh, so And this should happen 10 times. Um, so let's see if our function does what we expect of it. Uh, let's name this my function. And we will try to run this. And here, there's another way to import. Um, this line means that from my function, import everything in the function. So all of, sorry, everything in the file. So all the functions, everything there, uh, import them so that you can just use their names. Um, so Python did not have a problem with that. So we can call my function. And it went into an infinite loop because we didn't increase count by one um, every time that we went through this loop. And yeah, I didn't catch that because I <laughs> clearly have not practiced this very much. Um, but this is a good a good way to, to catch problems. Um, so we're going to try that again. And it's actually going to work this time. <laughs> um, And we're just going to run my function. And it didn't work. Oh, because I didn't. Right, every time you uh, want to reinterpret and rerun a file, you want to exit out of the interpreter and then re enter the interpreter. Uh, it's kind of annoying, but I don't think there's any other way, unfortunately. So now we're going to run this program 
and if it works as expected, uh, we will just get it to print uh, a series of numbers from 0 through 10, uh, 0 through 9 actually. Uh, so we're just going to import it like this. Um, this is just another way of importing it, and we can run my function by calling it its name. Um, so it ran from 1 through 11. Uh, this is what we expected because we incremented count before we inter incremented variable, so it should run 10 times, and it starts from 1. Uh, so that's, that's how a while loop works. Um, now we can show you another type of loop. Uh, it's called a for loop. Um, and for loops are generally used, well, while loops and for loops can be used interchangeably generally, but you want to be using for loops when you have an idea of how many times you want it to run. Uh, for example, if you only want it to run through the length of a given array, or if you want it to run through um, the length of a word or something like that, uh, or if you just want to add one to a number several times, you can do that too. Um, so uh, a while loop should generally be used when you don't actually know how many times it's going to run. Um, so it, they can be used interchangeably again, but there are some like best practices to how we how we would use them. Um, so we can now define the concept of an array. Um, we're going to be putting an array in here called my array or something of the sort. Um, and an array for background is just a list of items. Uh, they're defined between two square brackets. Um, so here, uh, I'm not actually going to keep this, by the way, this should be like an input to um, the function, not necessarily uh, defined inside the function, because the point of a function is that you can put whatever in there and it'll like have a different reaction based on, or have a different output based on whatever you put in. Um, so this array is going to have two, three, four, five. So arrays can be of anything. It can be of numbers, it can be strings, um, and a string array can look like this. Hi, hello. Uh, so these are examples of two arrays. Again, they're just lists, uh, nothing really special, um, but we're going to put them in as inputs. We're not going to actually define them in the function. Uh, so now we're going to talk about for loops. Um, again, for loops are used when you know about how many times you want to run uh, the actual loop. Um, so here we're going to run the loop as many times as there are objects in this array. Um, so there's a very nice way that Python has of doing this. Um, so the way that it's defined is just very nice. Um, len my array means you find the length of the array. Uh, so if there are three objects in the in the array, it'll give you three. Um, and for i in range basically just means um, for zero, one, two, three. Uh, so for everything between zero and um, the the number that results from range. Um, so this means that it'll run as many times as basically this this entire statement just means it'll run as many times as there are objects in the array. Uh, and that's very useful because you don't want to try to access something that's not in the array, or if you want to access the whole array, you don't want to just put in a random number and have it um, not get the entire thing. Uh, so this is a way where you can um, put in any array and this will work. Uh, and so here we want to, so we can think about this as like, you're going shopping and you want it to list out how many, like what objects are actually in your bag. Um, so you can have it print out everything that's in your array. Uh, so my array bracket I means uh, you want it to print out like the object that's at this ith place in your array. So for example, if you have an array of three items, the first item will be at the zeroth place, the second item will be at the first place, etc. 
Um, and since I, this I number is going to be going, uh, is going to be increasing as like this loop runs, um, this will print all of the items in your array. Uh, so here, um, we're going to be, I will save this. Uh, we're going to be, right, I already pressed Python. Um, we're going to define some array, um, and we're going to say that you purchased bananas, mangoes, and oranges while you were shopping. And Python now knows that array equals this list of fruits. Um, and now you can import your function. Um, and you want to put in array, and you want to run my function on the array. And now uh, it it's printed bananas, mangoes, and oranges because we had it print out everything that was in the array. Um, so are there any questions? Is everything more or Wait, less put me on the spot straightforward? Yeah. <laughs> does this mean that I'm doing amazing? Terribly. Terribly, <laughs> of course. Mm. Um, okay, so now Can you... Can you repeat this doing vegetables? <laughs> <laughs> okay, how about we prove again that this can be done in many different ways? So my vegetables... What kind of vegetables do you like, Carly? Ooh, spinach. Spinach. <laughs> Not kale. <laughs> Not kale. And... Ooh, you broccoli. don't need a third one. I want broccoli. Okay. You should give a fourth one so that we know that this doesn't just work for three numbers. Carrots. Three string arrays. Carrots. Okay. You're very healthy. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to run my function on my vegetables. Ta-da! You purchased spinach, not kale, broccoli, and carrots. Good job. I'm pro grill. Yes, the Fresh Grocer is a an amazing supermarket near Penn. You should check it out sometime. Not. Uh, so this concludes the Python tutorial. Uh, hopefully, you found that resourceful. Um, we did our best. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> totally. Okay. I think so. Well, thank you for watching. <laughs>